Hello, my name is Casey Brush, and I'm going to talk to you today about my group's sensory analysis of dark chocolate for Food Science 422. So we chose to study dark chocolate because of its popularity, its complexity, having different flavors come out at different points of consumption, its ability to pair with other foods and drinks. It goes very well with nice red wine, and it has a very good diversity of flavors. You can find many different attributes depending on which chocolates you go to, where the beans are from, what ingredients they use. The five sensory attributes we decided to test are sweetness, melting, bitterness, tartness, and fruitiness. We came to these attributes based on eating a variety of dark chocolates, tasting them, and deciding what stood out the best to us. With these five, we felt that our four sample chocolates would each represent these flavors well. They'd be easier for the panelists to pick out and would uh, give us clear results. The four samples that we chose um, each had a different percentage of cacao, starting at 72%, going to 78, 85%, and 86%. I'm not going to read through the ingredients list for all of these, but as you can see, uh, the 72% and the 86% were Ghirardelli brand, and the 78 and 85% were Safeway Select. They all have very similar ingredients, but you may notice that a few of them have unique ones, such as the 86% having milk fat in it. The four panelists for this study were each De WSU food science or wine majors. We had three males and one female, ranging in age from 22 to 39 years old. And we conducted a prop test before beginning this to determine that two of our panelists were super tasters one was a non-taster and one was a taster so it gave us a very diverse group of people here which we hoped would give us a better standard of results the sample preparation for this study was fairly simple we prepared everything in a separate room from the panelists uh, giving them each a 25 by 25 milliliter millimeter sample in order to not fill them up but give them enough that it would actually be able to melt in their mouth and have a substantial amount. Uh, we used a warm spoon to get rid of any identifying characteristics such as name brand on top of the chocolate or distinctive ridges for the Safeway Select. We wanted it to be as unbiased as possible in its presentation to them. Upon presenting them, they were each designated with a three-digit code, one for each sample. That way we would be able to identify the samples that were presented randomly, but the panelists would not be influenced. Each serving was served at room temperature on a paper towel. Training for this study uh, took place over roughly an hour. Um, we developed a standard for each of our sensory attributes. For sweetness, it was sugar, or specifically sucrose, and 5 grams of sucrose per 4 fluid ounces of water. Melting, we used a standard Hershey's bar for milk chocolate. Bitterness, we used quinine from the prop solution. Tartness, we used lemon juice, 5 milliliters uh, per, mixed with 5 milliliters of water. For fruitiness, we used a strawberry blackberry jam, and it was not diluted at all. We had each, the panelists sample these together to come up with an agreed upon intensity on a 15 centimeter line scale. That way, when they were taking the actual samples, they'd be more consistent with each other for what 
necessarily rated a 10 or a 12 rather than arbitrarily placing. Effectiveness for, of this was measured by, after conducting this several times in a row, seeing how cl similar their answers were to each other with various random chocolates. The formal, formal evaluations for this study took place at WSU Tri-Cities Sensory Analysis Lab and the Wine Science Center. One sample was provided at, at a time, and all four samples were presented in a session with all four panelists partic participating. They were separated by the barriers, as you can see in the picture on the right, and they were blocked off from the preparation room by a screen. We did not need, since color was not being tested at all, we did not darken the lights. It was well lit in the room. They could see everything. They just could not speak to each other or see the preparation. After each sample, saltine crackers and water were provided, and the next sample was given one minute after they ate the saltine cracker to reduce any influence of previous samples. A 15 centimeter line scale was used to designate the intensity of each attribute for each sample. For statistical analysis, we used three tests, ANOVA, Fisher's LSD, and Principal Component Analysis, better known as PCA. And I'd like to thank Dr. Ross, our professor for Food Science 422, for helping us get these results. The results of the ANOVA test, which measures the differences in a characteristic based on sample, um, showed significant dis differences between three of the tasting attributes, sweetness, bitterness, and fruitiness. With these three attributes, there, there were distinctions between the samples. One sample would be significantly sweeter than another, for example. You can see that with sample 255 and 378 on sweetness, for example. Fisher's LSD measures the differences in attitude attributes between the samples, so cross-comparing. For each sample, you can see that for sweetness, sample 378 was by far the sweetest. Um, bitterness, samples 255 and 615 were the most bitter with no significant difference between the two of them. For fruitiness, Sample 255 showed the highest fruitiness intensity with a significant difference from the other three, but three, so sample 378 also showed a significant difference from the two below it. So they were both significant, but 255 was the most intense on fruitiness. For PCA, we were able to see which attributes were connected closest to various samples. For example, three, seven, sample 378 could be described as sweeter, uh, melting easier, whereas 255 would be considered more bitter. And with this PCA, you're able to see the uh, significant differences between various samples like 255, 378 from 637. 615 and 637 were not too far apart, but there is still a clear separation. The contents of the samples and the sample number are here. So you can see that 255 is the 86%, the highest concentration of cacao. And Again, we have the ingredients listed here, but I'm not going to go over those again. So 255 had the highest cacao content, followed by 615, 378, and 637. By going back to the previous slide, 
you can see that with the highest cacao content, the bitterness increased. 615 was the next most bitter with 85% cacao, followed by 637 and 378 after that, which uh, makes sense, giving room for the various ingredient differences. In conclusion, there are significant differences between three attributes, bitterness, sweetness, and fruitiness. No significant differences in tartness or melting. PCA also gave us the ability to see that the lowest percent of cacao is the sweetest and the highest percent of cacao is the bitterness, supporting our belief that you can distinguish dark chocolates based on cacao percentage, which would be from those attributes. Here are the references that we used in designing this study. Um, thank you. Have a good day.